So, hello everybody. My name is uh, Volker Markel and I'm the director of Bifold, the Berlin Institute of the Foundations of Learning and Data. And on behalf of Bifold and TU Berlin, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you on this workshop on machine learning and data management for Earth observation that uh, has been organized by my dear colleague, uh, Begum Demir, and our team here at Bifold for uh, communications and event management. And uh, I am a professor for data management, so Bifold reflects what is the new uh, wave of AI that we have been seeing, that is on the one hand, having large amount of data available, big data that needs to be managed and processed on the one hand, and on the other hand, having intelligent algorithms that usually come from the domain of machine learning. Nowadays, a lot of also hype, but also a lot of truth in the area of particular neural networks, deep neural networks, as we all know, but also some of what people would call old-fashioned AI that is uh, traditional methods that are being used in order to uh, derive new insight. And those two key drivers of this new wave of innovation of AI, big data, and machine learning are exactly what is the topic of research and investigation in Bifold. So Bifold is an institute here in the Berlin area that is uh, carried by TU Berlin, but also has other partners like our university, uh, hospital Charité. And Bifold conducts now research in machine learning, big data, and in particular at the intersection of the two. And in this context, Bifold has a set of research groups. So we are funded by the state of Berlin and the federal government as one of the uh, five national competence center on uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, we conduct research in uh, many aspects of data, that is data preparation with professor, data preparation and data cleansing, machine learning systems, traditional data management and its impact on AI, responsible data management, but also, of course, on the other side in machine learning, that is, of course, traditional machine learning, deep neural networks, but explainable AI, and also in application areas like machine learning and security, and uh, also medicine and, and, and many others. So Bifold, as an institute, has been running for a couple of years now and has already had some very great success stories. and. Uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we are very proud of, of course, is having Begum here as part of Bifold, who has been conducting research in the area of big earth observation, and particularly for ERC grant, but also related projects. And uh, we had also the opportunity to collaborate in several aspects of creating you know, benchmarking archives uh, that help us with uh, applying machine learning methods now in earth observation data. And uh, this really ties, again, all of what the workshop is about today together. With respect to the workshop, I'm, I'm really, really happy of what, and really congratulations, Begum, on that. Uh, the program that you have assembled, which uh, today starts, uh, of course, with some speech. So I, I felt, so I had the discussion when Begum asked me I should give an introductory note. I felt that it's actually more important for you to hear about the great stuff Begum is doing. And I don't want to bore you too much with general speaking, I'm a researcher myself, so I think we don't want to hear too much about, you know, organizational stuff and institute structures and so on. Rather, let's hear what is really the great research. And so in this uh, opening remarks, uh, I asked actually Begum to rather talk about her research and all the great stuff in, in Big Earth, and I'll try to make my part even faster because of that. So, but after that, uh, after Begum's uh, introduction, I'm very, very happy, and I'll talk more about that in, uh, after Begum's presentation, that we have Alex Chalai here, who will give us a different perspective uh, uh, on you know, what uh, one can do by providing large amounts of data uh, for analysis. Uh, so Alex is one of the pioneers in this field, and uh, we'll hear about that. So that was in the area of astronomical data. And, uh, but I think a lot of it also applies to Earth observation, and you can immediately see the connections. And I will not go into the rest of the agenda in too much detail right now, but we have lots of exciting speakers and an exciting program with representatives from ESA, from NASA, from companies like Google and IBM, from research institutions, from, from Mulich and many others that I'm not mentioning right now. So today's uh, talk is structured in the way that we have, of course, between the keynote presentations and the spotlights, we have breaks, like a lunch break, coffee breaks, and you've seen the coffee room is over there. Logistics, there's restrooms here on this side, there's restrooms on the other side as well. 
And uh, in the evening, we have a poster reception where you have the opportunity to hear and also see from the great work that some of the students have been doing here in the context of uh, machine learning, earth observation in, in Bifold and, and others. And uh, tomorrow's day, we'll continue with more keynotes and spotlights and uh, also some interesting panel discussion in the, in the afternoon. And one thing I also want to point out, in the evening, there is uh, a, a special event at the planetarium that I think should also be quite exciting. But without further ado, Again, a very warm uh, welcome to all of you. I very much thank you also for Begum and the team to organize it. Thank you for, to the speakers. And with that, I would uh, call Begum to the stage uh, to hear all about uh, Big Earth and Earth observation here at Bifold and TU Berlin. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you are hearing me well. That's OK. OK. So uh, on the behalf of the organization committee, I also would like to welcome you. It is uh, really great to see uh, all of you here in person. We organize a two days event for you with full of interesting talks, uh, discussions, uh, poster presentations, panel discussions, and so on. And I hope that you will be uh, enjoying it with fruitful discussions. So, um, I would like to briefly uh, mention you uh, about our research activities in this opening talk. Uh, I think uh, most of you already know me. Uh, yeah, I'm Begum Demir. I'm leading uh, two different groups here at TU Berlin and Bifold. At the Bifold side, our group is devoted to um, uh, analyze uh, big uh, data in auto observation. And in the uh, Faculty of Computer Science side, we are mainly focusing on machine learning for auto observation. And uh, our um, research directions can be summarized in three different lines. We are, mod uh, we are developing models, methods, uh, approaches, and so on, in terms of uh, several different tasks related to Earth observation, like uh, image classification for land cover maps generation, change detection, visual question answering methods and algorithms, image search and retrieval uh, systems, and so on and so forth. And then we also uh, develop ecosystems, prototypes, and software libraries and release them to public. And then we also uh, develop benchmark data sets. I'm sure that you have already heard about Big EarthNet, but Big EarthNet is not the only data set that we uh, release in our group. There are also uh, others like HighSpecNet, Trisat AI, so on and so forth. So, um, I cannot uh, talk on all of the uh, developments in a short talk today, but I would like to uh, mainly focus on our developments in the Big Earth project that is funded by European Research Council. So Big Earth project has started um, slightly more than five years ago, and we um, develop accurate and um, scalable systems uh, to um, discover knowledge from the Big Earth observation data archives. So, um, it is very important because as a, a result of advances in satellite technology, we are observing that Earth observation data archives are growing fast. For example, um, through Copernicus uh, program, Sentinel satellites acquire more than 12 terabytes of data per day. So Sentinels are not the only ones, there are many others, so we are observing uh, increasing the amount of data, not only in terms of volume, but also in diversity. There are also uh, several different uh, new missions to come. For example, here you see uh, the list of uh, new missions um, that are related to Copernicus Sentinel expansion missions. And uh, for example, among them we have CHIME. CHIME will acquire hyperspectral images, and then uh, that's a, a proof that the archives uh, will grow to expand. And the knowledge to be extracted from these archives is very crucial for understanding the state of our planet. So in the uh, Big Earth project, we mainly focus on knowledge discovery by querying the archives with an example image. So one can call it as a query by image system, or one can, call, uh, one can call it as a content-based image retrieval system. 
So uh, what we would like to do is um, to retrieve images from the archive similar to a query image. So here you see, for example, a query image acquired uh, over Baltic Sea that includes algae bloom, and uh, a query by image system can aim to retrieve images similar to that containing algae blooms. Yeah? So of course, uh, for some of the events uh, that uh, we hear on the TV or on social media, we know them, but there are also several others that we don't know, we don't hear, but the information is hidden in the archives and query by image systems can help us to um, find it. So here there's another example. So query image includes conifer forest and the uh, system, search and retrieval system, aims to find other images from the archive that includes conifer forest. So uh, independently from the type of the satellite data, such systems require two main blocks. The first block is to um, obtain discriminative and robust descriptors that uh, model the complex content of satellite images. And then the second model uh, takes uh, the image descriptors and match them to find the most similar ones to the query. Of course, there, considering the uh, size of the data uh, archives, there we need scalable approaches. Yeah. And Bigart aims to um, analyze the challenges given in these two blocks. Yeah? And during the last years, we have developed several works to address this. So we have more than 70 papers, three benchmark data sets, several different software libraries, and one prototype search engine that uses our developments to demonstrate that it can work in a um, prototype manner. And you will see the demo uh, in the demo session today. So of course, I cannot talk about 70 uh, papers at the moment, so I will be um, talking on just a couple of uh, them. So uh, one of our uh, developments that uh, had very high impact is the Big Earth Net benchmark data set that we developed. So this data set includes uh, almost 600,000 Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 satellite images acquired over 10 European countries. So uh, the data set is available through its own website and also in um, Google Earth Engine, TensorFlow, and various ML hubs. So we have observed since it is first released, it has been downloaded more than 40,000 times, and there are several other research works using our data set, and there are several other data sets that extended Big Earth Net during the last year. So we are very proud with the success of Big Earth Net. So uh, as I mentioned to you, we have also a prototype search engine that is operational on Big Earth Net data set. Today you will uh, see it uh, in the demo session. Um, but this is a proof that uh, we have a search engine that can be operational on satellite data at the moment, and we are um, collaborating with European Space Agency to uh, apply it, to extend it for the operational use cases on all uh, Copernicus archives. So uh, the annotations, land use, land cover labels uh, of Big Earth Net comes from um, European Environmental Agency's Corin database of the year 2018. So we were lucky that at the time of uh, this data set preparation, um, European Environment Agency released the Corin database of the year 2018, and this helped us to annotate our data set. So we know that using thematic products such as Corin uh, database is a very good way to develop large-scale benchmark data sets to support research and development in AI for Earth observation studies. However, we know that such maps can also create some noise, and this leads to noisy labels. And if you have noisy labels in your data, this can affect um, the model training and thus the generalization performance of your uh, models that you are developing. So the question was how we can handle uh, training sets with noisy labels, because at the end, in remote sensing, it is very time demanding, challenging, and expensive to collect annotations at large scale. And um, we have to use existing um, products, but we need to also uh, handle um, the consequences like noisy labels here. So then to address this issue, we have developed several different uh, models, algorithms, that can learn 
efficiently, effectively from the noisy labels. So we have a specific web page where you can find all our papers, software, um, and so on. And uh, here, um, unfortunately, there is no time to go theoretically in deep details. Okay, so as I mentioned to you, if you are working on large-scale data for image search and retrieval, scalability is very important. So uh, we achieve scalability um, in our systems through hashing. So we uh, map the representations of uh, semantic content of satellite data to binary codes. And then when we have the binary codes, the whole images can be indexed in a hash table from where search and retrieval can be achieved in a scalable manner. So during the last years, we have developed several hashing algorithms to allow scalable search and retrieval. Um, so if you are interested in uh, our developments on hashing, please feel free to visit our website. But I would like to just very quickly mention that one of the interesting works that we have recently developed is to apply indexing to data while we are compressing the images. As you can imagine, because of the um, size, uh, because of the size of the data archive, satellite images are stored in a compressed manner. And then, if you would like to index the data, you need to decode it. But we develop an approach um, to avoid this time-demanding process, how we can index the semantic content with binary codes while compressing the images. So please uh, take a look to our work if you are interested in that. And in general, I also see that um, it's a very timely um, approach to uh, develop uh, ideas on how we can analyze the images in compressed domain. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, another interesting work that we have done uh, very recently is the sensor agnostic search and retrieval. So imagine like you have a query image that is uh, about one image modality, like Sentinel-1 synthetic aperture radar, and you would like to retrieve images from other data archives with other image modality, like Sentinel-2 multispectral images. So the modalities are different, archives are different, um, but the search and query can be done by um, using sensor agnostic approaches, yeah? So we have recently developed a completely self-supervised approach that is based on uh, mask autoencoders. We know that um, the development of uh, self-supervised systems through mask autoencoders is very promising at the moment, uh, but the existing works are mainly focusing on single image modality, like either Sentinel-1 or Sentinel-2 or Landsat. But here, we um, extended there's a mask auto encoder based approaches to be operational on multimodal Earth observation data that allowed us to achieve accurate and scalable search and retrieval across different modalities. So, for example, in the bottom, you see an example query image is Sentinel 1, it's a RADA data, and the retrieved images are Sentinel 2 multispectral images. So, when you are um, uh, working on uh, sensor agnostic approaches, it is very important that intramodal and intermodal characteristics are uh, precisely modeled. So this approach that we develop is mainly targeting that through it is multi-sensor encoder, cross-sensor encoder, and so on. Yeah. For the details, please take a look. Also, the software is currently publicly available for this approach. So in the Big Art project, the main aim has been query by image. So user selects query image and search for similar ones. But in our group, uh, we work beyond query by image. Yeah? So for example, we research on how we can apply query by change. So the query data can be a pair of images acquired on the same geographical area at different times. And it can represent a very important type of change. For example, here, this is deforestation. And the search system can aim to find all the similar changes from the archive, like all the other deforestated areas from the archive, together with all the metadata information, acquisition times, um, seasons, and so on. Yeah? We think that that is very important, and this can help us uh, to um, automatically uh, find um, changes related to climate, for example. 
We are also working on querying the archives by text, by caption. So instead of providing an image as query, one can uh, just type what you are looking for and then find the satellite images with that content from these large-scale data archives. Here again, we are working on for the scalability hashing, but in this case, it is about cross-model retrieval because of uh, including different types of data, text and images. Okay, so we are also working on um, development of visual question answering systems. There are different um, works that we have developed so far. And uh, recently, we have developed a new data set, a benchmark data set based on Big Earthnet, where we have the images, satellite images, question and answers. And um, like, for example, you see one image uh, on the top. The question is, does arable land cover more than 75% of the area? And the answer is yes. Yeah. So the data set uh, is almost ready. We are uh, doing the final checks, and we plan to uh, release it very soon. We uh, hope that uh, this uh, data set, Big Earth Network data set, will help the researchers to um, conduct their uh, benchmarking tests uh, on visual question answering systems. Okay, so uh, these are the topics that we mainly target for uh, Big Earth Net and Big Earth Net related research, but these are not the only works, to be honest. There are much more than this. Please visit our website that you will see details. And also during the poster session today, there will be many posters of our team uh, members that you will see uh, that wide range of topics we are targeting at our groups. And uh, all these works could not be done without the support of uh, our team members and collaborators. So I would like to thank to everyone to be as ambitious as me. <laughs> yeah. And with that, uh, it's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. I hope you will be enjoying these two days. <laughs>